I'm Greg Henderson. I own unofficial use only. This is my shop. Here at Unofficial Use Only, I like to bend sheet metal, reshape it, reform it, kind of make it look factory, but way cooler. You can see some of my builds like Frankenproof or Pathkiller or many others. When the TJ transitioned into the JK in 2007, the JKU had a 116 inch wheelbase and it just opened a whole new realm of possibilities for wheeling. So, why not try and capture some of that? We know that TJ's did good with like a 110 inch wheelbase, but I wanted to push the envelope. And there was actually a factory TJ that was built that not a lot of people know of because it wasn't here in the United States. And that was called the Egyptian Military T1. The Egyptian Military T1 was a TJ with a little diesel engine with a 116 inch wheelbase. So it was a 22 inch frame and body stretch. Um, but still had that beautiful departure angle that a TJ has. So immediately that's what we set to work to do. So on this vehicle, the chassis needed to be stretched 22 inches. And then we had to follow that up with a body stretch of 22 inches. Like in this clip, you see the frame sitting there and we're just going to get ready to kind of start putting it together. So we've already cut it in half. You'll see if you really look along the frame rails, there's stems that go all the way down to the ground. So I took some one by one square tubing and welded it to the frame before it was cut in half. That way, when we separated it by that 22 inches, everything would still be on level. Um, because when you cut a frame in half, you definitely don't want to weld it to back, back together crooked. You can hear me in this clip that's coming up, explain to Redbeard and explain to everybody how to do it the way that I wanted to do it to make sure that the frame is actually structurally stronger after the stretch than before the stretch. So right here on the frame stretch, we have a piece of tube because the frame of a TJ isn't um, an exact size. It's not a very, it's not a size that you can get at the steel store. So we got a piece of two by three we actually cut it lengthwise and then slid it into the frame. So it goes in five inches on either side. Um, and this is quarter inch wall, which has an enormous amount of strength compared to the eighth inch wall frame. And then we're, we're going over it with three sixteenths. And this was flat plate that we had bent um, at the appropriate size so that it matches the TJ frame. So once we clink it all up, we get it cut in, we want to make sure that we're even on both sides, top and bottom. And then Captain Redbeard is going to do a little weld. Now, this is one of Captain Redbeard's first real structural welds on a TJ frame. And there's so much that he's going to add, and I'm going to kind of watch to make sure that it's, it's done right. So it's set up, he's going to tack it. Once it's tacked in place, then he'll do a couple pass welds and then the full fill weld. For the bottom of the frame, we're actually going to flip the frame over so we get really good welds and we don't have to weld overhead. See now where he messed up there is he should have done the whole outside piece before he moved in so he didn't have to step over the frame six times. So I'm going to come towards you instead of this way. Okay. Normally I would come towards myself so I can watch the leading edge of the puddle. Okay. Here you see um, we've the welding of the frame, so the actual stretch has been completed, and we have flipped the frame upside down, um, and that was to do the under frame welds. After it was flipped upside down, what you see here, we're going through and smoothing everything out. Anywhere that there was maybe a factory defect or a factory weld that wasn't good or um, something that had been welded on and cut off later, we went through and smoothed the entire frame. No suspension company has designed a suspension kit to bolt onto a frame that's been stretched 22 inches. So we had to move the upper and lower control arm mounts uh, on the frame side for the TerraFlex long arm that's going on it. We had to move them back 22 inches. So he's gonna cut out all of these gussets 
to help reinforce the movement of that suspension. And you will notice there are some of the original body mounts on the frame. Now, if there was no defect, we didn't remove them. But you will see later, we're gonna have to fabricate and make some new body mounts because we stretched the body 22 inches, so now we need to add additional body mounts. Here you see uh, the suspension mounts have already been mocked up. You see the lines on the frame from all the measurements. The suspension mounts have been tack welded into place. And then Captain Redbeard is cutting the material out of 3 16 cold rolled plate so that we can weld it in and finish everything out nice and, nice and smooth. And we want to make sure that it's completely structural because it is part of the suspension. So here, if you look close, underneath the Jeep, you'll see this wood cart. So we actually built that wood cart. It's got wheels on it, the whole nine yards, specifically to hold the top of the Jeep, so the body, um, perfectly square, so that when it's time to cut the body in half, it gives us a platform where after we cut it in half and we stretch it that 22 inches, it holds everything square. That way, nothing gets out of line. A TJ is a unitized body that sits on a frame, so it's already a unit body. It really doesn't flex very much. So we built a cart to hold it so that all the body mounts are actually bolted into place so that it won't flex after the cut. This is really fun and it makes me giggle watching it. Um, Captain Redbeard, he's trying to remove the bed liner. That looks to be really fun. So something that we do, a lot of people do to modify their Jeep is they will do a bed liner on the interior, which does great things. It deadens noise, so it's a sound deadening. Um, it also prevents scratches and really prevents rust. You know, you can wash the inside of your Jeep with a pressure washer without ever worrying about it. However, you can see how much fun it is to remove a properly installed bed liner. It is not fun at all. I think in total between uh, Captain Redbeard and myself, we had probably six to eight hours just peeling this bed liner out of this Jeep. Um, definitely not fun. We're finally getting to the point where we can cut the TJ tub in half. We've measured a million times. We can't stress that enough. Measure, measure, measure. We had to drill out all the spot welds, remove all the seam sealer, find a nice flat body portion where the outer cut would be, and cut it in half. Okay, here we go. We're getting ready to pull the tub off. Separate it for the stretch. The body has been cut in half. All of the spot welds that were drilled, you know, basically everywhere where it needed to be cut or trimmed or separated to get the rear portion of the tub off of the front portion of the tub. Spirits. So Redbeard, yes. How was how was uh, cutting your first Jeep in half? A lot simpler than I thought it would be. Perfect. So now we've pulled in a second vehicle. Now this vehicle was a 2006 TJ that had been in a really bad roll, pretty much destroyed. So we took the lengthy process of completely dissembling it from a complete Jeep to a bare shell. Pulled the motor out, pulled everything out, completely took it apart, got it all the way down to just the tub. Redbeard used the plasma cutter to cut the front of the tub off because we want that floor section that holds the driver and passenger front seat. He meticulously cuts it out, gets it all set so that we can have that piece to go in the middle. And we're putting the back section of the tub now that's gonna go onto the frame. And then we'll have to carry the front piece of the tub and set it up and then line all the body mounts up, get everything happy. And we actually bolt it back to the frame with all the factory body mounts. That way, the leftover section is that 22 inches of space that we now need to completely rebuild. So we're gonna use the floor from the donor section and then we'll build our own body sides. So it's a 22 inch gap that we've added. And if we get real close, you can see the double wall. So this inner piece 
is just a bridge so that when we're welding we get really good penetration and it makes it a little bit more structural. So that goes all the way up around. This is some of the stuff that we did the other day. Another bridge inside. And what we're gonna do is I fabricated some panels. So here's one of the panels. So this piece of sheet metal fits the hole exactly. It's got a little radius at the bottom, which is kind of hard to see. But that will fit in the hole exactly. So I'm going to chuck this in the hole. So I'm using a lot of magnets all the way around it. And each magnet is holding the panel as flush as it can to the original Jeep. Um, that way, we lessen the amount of warping and everything that else that happens. Um, again, we're going to do the tack, tack, tack method instead of full welds. That way we can put a tack over here and we don't go back to the area until it's cooled down enough to not warp the panel. This is going to take me, I don't know, another hour or so to get welded in. So now you can really see how much additional length is put into that TJ. So now it's the exact length as a military T1. Um, 22 inch frame stretch all in the middle, same departure angle as a regular TJ. Now on the inside you'll see there's a big hole where the floor should be. And that, we're actually doing something a little bit fun. Um, well, I don't know if it's fun, it's a lot of extra work. But what we're gonna do, because it's so much longer and it's a tour vehicle, we're going to add a second row of seats. And so as I go through this section, um, I am grafting in the floor. So this floor goes in and out of the vehicle probably 25 to 30 times. Once it has been trimmed and cut to fit as well as possible, then I have to make all of the little joiner pieces. So all the gussets and little pieces that fill in the gaps. Um, and you can see obnoxious use of clamps, uh, lots of welding, um, you know, just going through the process of getting this second floor piece put in so that one, it's structural because we're going to have seats bolted to it. So we want to make sure that it is in there. Definitely, if you haven't done it already, like, subscribe, click the notification bell, share these videos with your friends.